Welcome back to the Video Essentials Bundle Plus. Okay, okay, okay. Today we are here to talk about the flying machine. Oh, I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. But first, I've been working on something in the background for all of you. And this is awesome. This is the addition. It's uh, the plus, the plus symbol at the end. We've added stars, snow, a couple video plaques. We've also added clothes that you can change the scale of. A VIP door so you can be on a VIP list or let VIPs in by pressing your trigger if you are a VIP. And then over here, we've got a private room with a lock and unlock button. And then we've got the OP trigger, which allows you to just play visual effects, sound effects, and so much more. And a boom box. It's a portable boom box uh, based off one that I actually had in college, which is pretty cool. Press the play button. Press the stop button. You can skip through tracks just by pressing through that. And yes, it does have names. Very, very cool. Ooh, a super annoying party popper. <laughs> and we have some simple counters here. So this allows you to count up or down. You can do it in plain number or with minutes. Very cool. And here we have a heads up display. I currently have it set to work on the second person to enter the world, but basically you just duplicate this for as many players as you need and adjust the number on the controller. And we have some launch from objects, some very cool stuff. Oh, and health. Uh, yeah, there was a guy literally yesterday asked for this. Health is here. I made it. I cannot wait to show you more about it. But that's all going to come in a later video because today we're talking about the flying platform and we're going to make it so you can use this for whatever you want to do. So the first thing we're going to do is let's build this. So I'm going to pass it back to History. History Lakes, the guy from a month ago who recorded the tutorial. And then I'm going to be right back here to show you how we can upgrade this. And uh, the upgraded version will come with this latest bundle. And by the way, if you already have the video essentials bundle this is gonna be there we're going to replace that entire world with this new world so all you have to do is import it into a new empty world and you're all set so go ahead and check that out right now it is available and we will see you at the end of the video for more on how to upgrade this flying platform let's get right into it oh yeah don't forget to like subscribe and uh you know hit the bell if you want to i gotta tell you this one is going for gold i don't know we're gonna like <laughs> We're building a flying platform. That's right. The toolkit of essentials includes a flying platform. Because the reality is I've built this script several times just because I, I needed it in multiple worlds. So having it in the toolkit, I think, is extremely valuable. Control flying platform. This is going to be pretty cool. So we're going to need some variables. Let's start by creating an object variable. This is going to be the platform that flies. Um, I'm just realizing now that I needed to start this script with the return script. So let's go over and grab object return, duplicate that, delete this, and we'll try that again. <laughs> then we're gonna go ahead and create a new variable. And this is an object variable, which is going to represent our platform. We'll reference this when we are done. And so this is gonna be running on the controller that controls the platform, but we're also going to need to have a return script on the platform itself. So we'll get to that. I think it's gonna be pretty easy. Um, so I'll show you how, how we're going to do that in just a moment. What we want to do is go to our events, go down to controller events, and we're going to use when index trigger is pressed. Perfect. So when index trigger is pressed, we want to move the player forward. And so let's go ahead and grab motion and grab move by. And I'm, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. This might blow you away at how simple this is going to be. Um, seriously though, we're going to move self by and we're going to go to operators, scroll down. Oh, and we don't want to do instant motion. Sorry. We want to go back to motion, grab move by over time. And then we're going to go to operators, scroll down and grab forward direction of player. Put that here and drop player in and change the time. And we'll go and create a new number variable called speed. And then we're gonna create, this will be set to one, and then we'll create another number variable called distance multiplier, multiplier. And this is gonna multiply how much further you can go with one press, which we're gonna start with two. And so this is pretty good. We're gonna duplicate this and then delete this, go to our operators tab, grab the multiply symbol from the top, Put that in here, drop this into the left, delete this. Then we're gonna go grab our variables speed, which is our time, and distance multiplier and put that here. 
And now when the index trigger is pressed by a player, it's going to move based on where the player is looking. Uh, that's pretty simple. <laughs> uh, I like it, but I think there's one problem, one like kind of serious flaw with it, which is that the forward direction of the head is often looking down at the controller. Uh, so let's actually use forward direction of controller, not player. So let's go back to our operators tab, scroll down to object and use forward direction of the object self. And then whatever the controller is pointing is what will determine where you're moving to. Um, and just so for reference, distance multiplier, a forward direction is a one meter vector. So when you multiply it by a distance, it becomes that many uh, meters. So multiplying by two is two meters. So it's gonna move two meters over one second. Whew. So I like this. Uh, what I would like to do though is add another option. So if we go to our events tab and we have button one press and we have button two press, what we're gonna do is change the distance multiplier when button one and button two is pressed. And so we'll go to our values tab, grab a set to drop this into both of these. We're gonna grab a plus for the top and a minus for the bottom. And so plus goes into button two press and minus goes into button one press. And then what are we changing? Well, we're changing the distance multiplier. So we'll drop that into both of these. And then we will add a number one. And in case someone goes spamming on these, we kind of need to clamp them. So let's go add a clamp. Now, uh, because I typed this in backwards, I'm using an if to allow me to create my math first. So then I'm going to have in clamp and the number we're going to be clamping is this value here. So we drag that into the value slot. We can then bring that back here, delete the if now. And then what we want to do is clamp with a minimum and a maximum. So we want minimum one, maximum 25 for you who just said that. Um, and then duplicate. And then we're going to drag the minus into here, move clamp up into here, delete this one now. And now we have clamped it. Take this to the next level is adding just a little sound effect. And so let's go grab a new object called sound effect. And then we'll grab play sound effect. Play sound effect when index trigger is pressed. Wonderful. Okay, so we need a controller and a flying platform. My buddy Merck is, oh my gosh, I love this so much. Okay, honestly, I love this so much more than I thought I was going to. This is amazing. Great job, Merck. So you remember how I was talking about we need to be able to move this back to the original position? So we're going to use a really cool script for that. It's called Other Object Return. Uh, if you haven't already seen the part where we made that, go watch that. The other object is actually self, so we can just drag the reference cable to self and then the other grabbable is the object controller that Merck's working on right now and so we'll go ahead and get that from him in just a second and that will allow this object to return at the same time as the controller returns now our instant return no we want to use a delayed return of five seconds perfect and so let's go and uh <laughs> drag this over here make sure it's nice player sized and then we're going to like open up the properties panel. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> like, can't wait for Mansion 2.0. Put, put like a bunch of these in there. Control flying <laughs> platform. Oh, I need a sound effect. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. Okay, we're going to group this. Ooh, is can the I do one? Platform. Okay, so we've got the controller. Make it interactive and grabbable. We will not give it physics. That could be a problem, so we won't do that. And... We should actually give it grab lock. More uh, two-handed grab, yes. Use grab anchor. Uh, use grab lock. Don't use grab anchor. Okay, two-handed grab back on. Hand off only to self. If that works for me. Okay, I got my sound. Bringing it in. Reference sound effect. Hide sound effect underneath. It's Merky Merck. He is a builder. He likes to sit in his flying cups. It's Merky Merck. He is a builder. And now I sit in his flying cup. I messed up the script. I'll go reset it. I can't <laughs> believe I made the mistake. It happens. It does happen. It's such a simple mistake, too. Uh, move self. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We don't move self. We move the platform. So simple. Stop, reset, and play. 
I press the trigger, I can spam it, and I'll move wherever I go. I'm gonna turn up the uh, speed and woo 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 woo! Ah, ah. Speed me up, speed me up, speed me up, Scotty, speed me up, Scotty, woo! <laughs> okay, these are fun. These are so fun, especially because you can adjust the speed. That is amazing. I love that. When we let go, it should all return after five seconds. Nice. So the flying platform, that was really cool. But the big thing that you got to want to do is loop it, right? So instead of having to click your trigger finger a million times, you can just fly by pressing and holding. And so we're going to set that up today. And the first thing we need to do is create a new variable. And this is going to be a Boolean. And a Boolean is basically going to allow us to know, are we pressing down the trigger finger? And so we're going to call this can fly. Okay, Boolean has been created. It starts as false. And when the index trigger is pressed while grabbed by the player, we're going to set it to true. So we go to our values tab, grab set two, then we're going to go grab that Boolean. And then on our values tab at the bottom, you are going to see a Boolean input. This is going to allow us to define if we're setting it to true or false. And since the index trigger was just pressed, we can now fly. So we set that to true. And now when the index trigger is released, we want to set it to false. So we're going to go back to our events tab, scroll down to index trigger. There it is, index triggers released. I'm gonna place that right below and then set that and I pull down and then I duplicate by thumb sticking to the right. And then I just click it one time and now we've got set can fly to false. Okay, so we've defined when we can and cannot fly. We now need to create a loop. So first let's make sure this script doesn't have a loop in it. Yeah, I haven't looked at this in a month. I know you've been looking at it for the last 10, 15 minutes, but uh, I'm just getting right back into it. Okay, so we don't have a loop in here. So we're going to go scroll to the top and send event and one of when event is received. So let's start with when event is received and we're gonna put this right between the two. So we have index trigger released and index trigger pressed and then between the two, I like to just think chronologically about my scripts. It really just helps me think about it as I'm re-looking through it. So when loop is received. So then we wanna do send event with delay and we're gonna send this event every one second. So we just click the drop down. If you don't have a loop in your drop down, you'll find it by creating new event. And so we're just gonna go get it from the drop down again. And then back over here, we're going to send event to object. So when we set can fly to true, we're gonna send that loop to self and that's when we're gonna do the things. And so we'll grab play sound and move platform. And this is pretty close to being done, believe it or not. The one thing we do need to do is use this Boolean value to determine if we're still sending the loop to self. So we're gonna go up to the top, grab an if, pull our if down, drop in the play sound, grab the move, the sending loop, because we don't want it to continue looping. We drag that Boolean into here, and then I thumbstick to the right to duplicate it. When I let go, it returns back to that position, so you don't have to worry about it getting lost. And if can fly, play sound, move platform, send loop. What else is wrong with this? Well, it's gonna continue flying for a second after you like let go of your trigger. So let's make it so it stops flying entirely. So down here, when index trigger is released while grabbed, we set the Boolean to false, but let's also scroll down to cancel sending with delay. And we're gonna just cancel sending the loop to self. So if there was a one already in transit, it's going to stop. And I think we're done. Great job, great job everybody. I guess we should try it out and make sure it works. But uh, yeah, you know, that's what debugging's for. Do, do, do. Grab this and press trigger. There it goes, nice. And you can see it's kind of got this like one second delay, which is honestly a little annoying. So we're gonna fix that. Um, Cause it's just like, takes a second to decide where. And then if you speed it up, oh yeah, that becomes way more noticeably bad. So let's go and fix that. So the reason this is happening is because we're sending a loop with a one second delay. Now the speed is fine. So let's go ahead and change our time to be 0.1 seconds. That's the fastest you can send a loop. This means every 10 seconds, it's going to update its direction. Now the thing that I forgot about here is that we want to use a rotate two over time. So let's go grab rotate two over time, drop that in here. We're going to use the same speed here, but the direction is going to be a look at. And so we want to rotate the platform to look at the forward direction of self. So that way it's constantly looking in the same direction that it's going. With one caveat, we don't want the players to like tip themselves out or like flip themselves upside down. So what we're going to do is multiply it by a vector. So let's go, does that work? Yeah, it does. It does. Totally works. Um, so let me show you exactly how this works. A, the first thing we need to do is go to operators, scroll down to our vector section where you're going to find look at. 
So look at is going to take a vector and convert it into a rotation. And if you don't understand what that means, don't worry. You can see it's looking for a forward. But a forward is a vector. And what that means is we can scroll to the top here and grab a multiplication symbol. And then we're going to multiply that vector by a vector input value. And this vector input is going to basically alter what is our forward. And we know that we want to move in every direction except for up and down. Like we don't want it to look up or down. So we multiply it by one, zero, one, which removes the Y value, basically meaning it's going to rotate on a plane and it's not going to rotate like that. Perfect. So now where do we get our forward direction? Well, it's forward direction of self. It's the same one that we used up here. So we'll just go ahead and plug that in. And then our upward direction we can find underneath our object as well. It's right next to forward direction. So here's object transform, forward direction, and there is upward direction. So we'll go ahead and drag that into the up. And you know what I just realized? This isn't actually relevant because we know it's it's not going to rotate along that. So the upwards is always going to point up zero, one, zero. And so let's actually just go ahead and use a vector value. And so if you've never used up before, most of the time you can get away with typing in zero, one, zero, um, but having an upward direction, like the upward direction of an object, or if you scroll down to player, you can get upward direction of player. It basically is what allows you to have rotation. So kind of think of it like this. Say the forward direction is facing this way and your upward direction is facing this way. Well, zero, one, zero is always facing this way. And so if you have say a player's head, head up, and you have the head forward and the player rotates like down this way. So they're looking kind of cockeye. That is how you can get that rotation. So it rotates that way. But if you want that to always look up and so the players say they look down this way, it's not going to change. It's just going to like look to the right or look to the left. And that's basically what we're doing, which is pretty cool. Okay, wait, 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 let's test it first. Then we're going to change the platform out. So we come back in here, grab our controller. Go ahead and press the trigger finger. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that is kind of hysterical. It looks like it is off by 180 degrees. This happens, I'm not gonna lie, this happens all the time to me. And it's pretty easy to fix. So we got it moving in the right direction. The problem is the rotation is off. So it got me thinking, why don't we take our upward direction and change it to be a negative one? Let's just tell it to point downwards, right? So if it's pointing up, let's go ahead and point down. See if that works. Stop, reset, and play. And voila, look at that. Wonderful. I can tell the rotation is off a little bit and I'll show you how you can tell in just a second. It's just really hard to tell with this object, but I'm pretty sure it's off by about a quarter turn. So what we wanna do is create something else. So imagine you wanted to have, let's say a flying broomstick. Okay, so we've got our broomstick in place. I deleted all the other art. I added a little laughing sound instead. We have the same controller, which I, I, I'll admit is weird for a broomstick. So we got script, stop, reset, and play. And what I expect to happen is that the forward direction is gonna be off by about a quarter turn. So there it is. We know it's off by 90 degrees. We'll zoom in and we know it was 90 degrees in that direction. So we simply, so we're going to select all of our objects, unselect the ones that we don't need to rotate. So we're just rotating the broomstick, rotate that 90 degrees, and then we let go of it. We can then zoom out and zoom the entire grouping to the correct orientation. And now when we try it, we'll go ahead and stop, reset, and play. It should work. And so we'll go ahead and there we go. Hop on board. Oh, there, there we go. I wanna go make this non-collidable. I wanna feel like I'm actually sitting on it. Let's do that. Okay, make that non-collidable so we can sit on it. Now we'll zoom out. And now, final try, final try. Here we go, step on. Ooh, that's a little bit better. I definitely want it better though. So I moved the platform down. So theoretically this will work. Let's go ahead and try it out. Oh yeah, that feels a little bit better. Hey, there we go. <laughs> okay, the rotation definitely needs to catch up to my hand a little bit faster. It's not bad though, it's not bad. And if I stop, it goes for like a second before actually stopping, it's kind of, kind of bad but it's not the worst thing in the world so yeah let's get that rotation to be a little bit faster i mean you might even want the delay so feel free to re-add the delay but like no this is yeah this is pretty good 
<laughs> oh, whoever suggested the the broomstick, I uh, really appreciate it. That was a great idea. Okay, so what we want to do to finish this up is just change our delay. So we had our speed up here, default set to one. Let's go change that down to 0.2. And that should give us a much more responsive speed and rotation. So stop, reset, and play. So I think it's going to be a little too fast off the gun. Oh, yep. A little too fast? No, no, it's not bad. I mean, it's going to take you a little bit to get used to flying, but it feels really good. And then we can really, really speed it up. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like I'm going to get knocked out of here any second. Okay, so don't forget to stop. Like, <laughs> okay, and that stop isn't terrible. <laughs> the laugh. Oh man. Okay. It's gold. It's gold, you guys. I love it. So if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you don't have access to the Video Essentials Bundle, leave your Oculus username in the comments or take a picture in this world and I can get you added to this as soon as possible. Thank you guys so much again. Like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to know when we post a new video. And next time we're going to show you how to use the brand new Video Essentials Bundle Plus. See you in Horizon. Bye.